Hello and a happy 73rd Republic Day to you all. I am Tanya Pandey and I welcome you to Courts this week on Live Law. Subscribe to Live Law and click the bell icon to stay on top of all important legal developments happening in India. We'll begin the episode with judgments from the Supreme Court and thereafter cover other courts. The Supreme Court on 17th January dismissed an appeal filed by Devas Multimedia challenging the orders passed by the NCLT and NCLAT allowing winding up of the company on a petition filed by ISRO's commercial arm Antrix Corporation Limited. A bench of justices Hemant Gupta and V Ramasubramanian dismissed the appeals filed by Devas Multimedia and its shareholder Devas Employees Mauritius Private Limited. It was in January 2021 that the National Company Law Tribunal Bengaluru had admitted the petition filed by Antrix to wind up Devas Multimedia under sections 271 and 272 of the Companies Act. The Supreme Court on 20th January pronounced a detailed judgment upholding the permissibility of reservations in the All India Quota seats in the NEET examination for undergraduate and postgraduate medical courses and the constitutionality of 27% OBC quota in these all india quota seats the bench of justices dy chandrachur and as bupana opined that it cannot be said that the impact of backwardness simply disappears because a candidate has a graduate qualification the court also said that article 155 of the constitution which provides for reservations for socially and educationally backward classes in educational institutions does not make any distinction between ug and pg courses and noted that while in certain cases it has been held that there should be no reservation in super specialty courses it has never held that reservations in medical pg courses are impermissible the bench also wrote in the judgment that articles 154 and 155 of the constitution of india are not an exception to article 151 but an extension of it in a rather interesting case the property in question was admittedly the self acquired property of one marappa The question raised by the appellant before the Supreme Court was whether late Marappa's sole surviving daughter will inherit the property by inheritance or whether the property would devolve by survivorship on her father's brother's son. The court basically was considering the question whether a sole daughter could inherit her father's separate property dying intestate that is without a will. The bench of justices S Abdul Nazir and Krishna Murari observed that a daughter is capable of inheriting the self acquired property of her hindu father dying in testate the court also established the law in respect of a hindu female dying issueless and in testate and observed that in such a case her inherited property would go back to the source that is property inherited from her father or mother would go to the heirs of her father whereas the property inherited from her husband or father in law would go to the heirs of her husband The Supreme Court has delivered a judgment expounding the doctrine of lis pendens under section 52 of the Transfer of Property Act which means while a case is pending in court. The bench of justices K M Joseph and P S Narsimha explained that a transfer is not void just because it is made during the pendency of litigation and the effect of section 52 is that the transfer will be subject to the outcome of the suit. The court further pointed out that the pleas of bona fide purchase or lack of notice are not defenses available to the purchaser against the doctrine of lis pendens. The Supreme Court has reiterated that a confessional statement recorded under section 67 of the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act will remain inadmissible in the trial of an offence under the act. The bench of CJI NV Ramana and Justices Suryakant and Hema Kohli was considering an appeal filed by the Narcotics Control Bureau challenging orders passed by the High Court of Karnataka releasing on bail persons accused of offences punishable under provisions of the NDPS Act. The court noted that except for the voluntary statements of the accused or co-accused recorded under section 67 of the NDPS Act there was no substantial material available with the prosecution at the time of arrest to connect the accused with the allegations leveled against them of indulging in drug trafficking therefore the court refused to interfere with the high court's order except in case of one particular accused the supreme court has observed that the conduct of a plaintiff is very crucial in a suit for specific performance and the same has to be assessed by the courts 
in evaluating whether the plaintiff was ready and willing to perform his obligations under the contract it is not only necessary to view whether he had the financial capacity to pay the balance consideration but also assess his conduct throughout the transaction the bench of justices dy chandrachur and as bopanna said the court made this observation while allowing an appeal filed against a madras high court judgment that had confirmed the decree for specific performance the bench referring to the trial court judgment noticed that the trial court failed to frame an issue on whether the plaintiff was ready and willing to perform his obligations under the contract and instead assessed whether he is entitled to the relief of specific performance it's now time to take a look at important judgments from the high courts and other courts the allahabad high court has granted bail to two real brothers who had been accused of committing gang rape upon a victim as the court noted that she after leveling the allegations never admitted for any medical examination so as to establish the fact of gang rape upon her the court observed that the apex court in its various pronouncements has clearly opined that it is risky to blindly rely upon the victim's statement under section 161 and 164 crpc without having any supporting independent documentary proof or any other confidence generating material collected during the investigation arguments before the delhi high court in the case relating to marital rape are continuing a bench of justices rajiv shakdar and c hari shankar is hearing petitions challenging the exception to section 375 of the indian penal code which exempts marital rape from the offence of rape senior advocate raj shikhar rao appearing as amicus curiae has argued that classification of right to prosecute a man on the basis of relationship or marriage is unreasonable and offends article 14 of the constitution senior advocate rebecca john has argued among other grounds that sexual acts when done with consent are not an offence however when the same sexual acts are done without a woman's consent it becomes the fundamental foundational basis of invoking section 375 ipc in a significant judgment a single bench of the rajasthan high court has held that the married daughter of a deceased employee falls within the definition of dependence for compassionate appointment the perception of the daughter after marriage no longer being a part of her father's household and becoming an exclusive part of her husband's household is an outdated view and mindset dr justice pushpendra singh bhati observed the court observed that any discrimination between unmarried and married daughter and married son and married daughter would be in clear violation of articles 14 15 and 16 of the constitution the delhi high court has observed that the insurance company cannot avoid its liability of compensating the deceased's family even if the offending vehicle was stolen and was being unauthorizedly driven by someone else justice sanjeev sachdeva added that in order to avoid the liability the insurer must establish that there was a willful breach on the part of the insured accordingly the court upheld the order passed by the tribunal which had directed the insurance company to pay the compensation amount and recover the same from the driver who had stolen the vehicle the kolkata district consumer disputes redressal forum has recently ruled that restaurants cannot forcibly impose service charge on a customer and accordingly proceeded to direct the concerned restaurant to hand back the service charge it collected from a customer along with a compensation amount a bench comprising of president swapan kumar mahanti and member ashok kumar ganguly held that imposing a service charge on a restaurant bill is totally voluntary and not mandatory as per the guidelines of fair trade practice issued by the central government a commercial court in bengaluru has confirmed the ex parte temporary injunction issued in 2020 restraining acc steel private limited from using the the marks acc acc tmt 500 or any other mark logo or name similar or deceptively similar to the marks of acc limited the additional district and session judge baswaraj chenti allowed the applications filed by acc limited and said that the balance of convenience lies in the favor of the plaintiff and if the defendant is permitted to use the mark acc to his goods and services the plaintiff will be put to irreparable loss which cannot be compensated in terms of money These were the top updates from last week. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up 
and subscribe to Live Law to not miss any updates from us. I am Tanya Pandey and you're watching Quotes this week. Have a spectacular day. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from Live Law.